Okay, in this video clip, I'm going to take a look uh, here at this online resource, IBM Watson Studio. So um, we can make use of uh, cloud resources. Uh, IBM Watson Studio is one of those resources. And we can load some, um, some R code here into that online portal and run it. So a couple of uh, objectives here. One is to explore a little bit more uh, the machine learning concepts set out for um, uh, the mortgage loan approval process based on a Boston HDMA uh, data set and implement that in the IBM studio. So it is basically, at, at least initially in this video clip, um, I'm going to make use of the R uh, studio um facility available in IBM Watson okay so to uh, log into uh, IBM Watson then studio we'll just uh, okay IBM Watson studio and then we go to the Watson studio IBM cloud and uh, if you've never signed up before so I've signed up I have an account you can sign up here and uh, just go through the steps and create an account. So you can put in your email details and there's a couple of additional steps, but one also will include uh, deciding which plan to use. And uh, in my case, I'm going to, I've already signed in for this light version, which gives you some um, basic uh, computing resources uh, one CPU and four gigabyte of RAM. Um, I think uh, when I load up, it's eight gigabyte of RAM that's currently available when I log in. So I'm going to log in here and I need to put in my ID and I'll pause here and continue and then I'll put in my password. and log in okay so uh, i've already created an account um and i've signed up for the light plan and um, maybe we'll pause here for a second okay so this seems to be what i've got um okay so let's go into the ibm cloud and uh, we can then go to resource list and then I come down to services, Watson Studio. Okay, and then to uh, get into Watson Studio to get started. And there can be some latency here, so I might pause. And we can create a project or we can work with existing projects. So I have the HMDA uh, data set already developed here, but I, for purposes just to be thorough I'll create a new project and I'm going to create an empty project and again I'll give it uh, HMDA uh, Boston dataset and tidyverse analysis okay so I'm going to use tidyverse from R studio and um, I'm not going to leave a description. I'm just going to create and pause for a second. Okay, so I've come into here. Now, in this instance, I'm just merely going to launch our studio within the Watson Studio. And so I'm going to launch. Now, you've already an active our studio. Let's see uh, where that might be. So I might just pause. Okay, so I think I've closed that down. Let me just launch. So I'm going to launch and I get two vCPU and eight gigabyte of RAM. Okay, and let's launch. Okay, so um, I'm going to launch uh, our studio here again one more time. And I'm running into this issue. So I, I think uh, with the light version, it's not allowing 
uh, me to use uh, two sessions in our studio you already have an active our studio runtime project in HDMA ggplot2 you're not allowed to have more than one active our studio runtime okay so um because that limitation has been imposed then in uh, IBM Watson studio I'll go back to uh, my projects for a moment so I'll come back to um, IBM Watson and I'll come down to the original HDMA uh, ggplots and the codes that I have so I can now launch DR Studio and now it will run okay so uh, okay so what I can do is can go file new R script and paste my code in there now I'm going to empty out uh, just broom away all the existing work so I'm going to clear the console and I'm going to also give us a little bit more space and paste in the code and just execute okay so let's just run uh, now the code is the same as what we had uh, the code is different this time uh, what we had used before was we had examined uh, the the Boston HDMA data set with machine learning concepts and I had set up some logistic models and also um, uh, a C tree in this instance I'm just going to do an R tidyverse right using the code that I have here and I will leave that here so I go back into IBM Watson I've pasted in the code um, I've already installed, so this is an R Studio uh, environment. Uh, I'm just going to execute the code here and examine a little bit the graphing, offer some interpretation of the graphs. So let's just run through some of the, some of the concepts. Now the data is available in ECDAT. The HD, HMDA data is involved in this package. So we load that into our environment. Okay, and uh, the library tidyverse will run and execute and all the packages are available including ggplot and tidyr and the plier and then the package uh, party then I take the data H it, it should be HMDA but uh, the data in the EC that um, library is HDMA so let's just run that and uh, we'll f using the code set out by um, Hal Varian in his 2014 paper big data new tricks for econometrics okay so using code associated with this paper that was written by Hal Varian in 2014 okay uh, we'll follow his convention of renaming the condominium to condo which just means apartment okay and then we have some as before some some explanation of the columns that appear the data that appears in that HMDA data set okay so we'll take a look at the headings so we have debt to income ratio household um, expenditure to income ratio, loan to value, credit score, mortgage credit score, public record of um, uh, a finding in the court perhaps against an individual, denied mortgage, mortgage insurance, self-employed or not, uh, single or married, unemployment in the respective occupation of a particular applicant for mortgage condominium, uh, black denoting African American and deny meaning uh, no would mean approved and yes would mean you were denied your mortgage so kind of a double negative no deny means you approved the mortgage and that's what we're trying to predict but initially here we're going to focus purely on just trying to get uh, some descriptive statistics 
uh, we can see here how the data is organized. These are recognized as numbers, uh, factors, so on. And we'll view the HDMA, which is the R Studio Viewer. Okay, that's what the data looks like in the R Studio Viewer. And overall, there are 2,381 observations. 2,381 observations. Okay, so let's uh, plot a little bit here. Uh, let's take the HDMA data on the x-axis, put the Ni, and on the y-axis, uh, the number yes and no. Okay, so let's run that. And we can see here that the vast majority of individuals are actually yes, uh, no, they were not denied their mortgage. That means no means approved and yes means denied. Okay, so let's include here uh, also a bar chart for uh, credit scores. The vast majority of people slot into category one here, which is the best and then six is the worst so most people seem to be in one and two and we can do ggplot for a uh, mortgage credit uh, score as well and then we can look at um the hdma data again uh, but this time we're going to take the credit scores and um, divide between individuals who denied uh, yes and no. Now a new category appears. We would expect one, two, three, four, five, six only. But this category appears and it suggests that there's something up with our data. So we can correct that by excluding incomplete entries. So somewhere in our in our data set there is a credit score of this very peculiar number. It should be one, two, three, four, five, and six, very clearly. Uh, this is an anomaly. Let's exclude it by excluding incomplete entries. And we create a new data set called all. And that's what we'll run with from here. So now when we perform the same exercise, but using the data set all, and all, if we take a look here, we've removed one entry. Okay, so 2,380 observations, and we've removed one from the original data set. Okay, so let's run. And we get the same output as before, except it's how we might expect it to be. And we strictly have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 subcategories for the credit score. 1 being the best. And overwhelmingly here, you can see that 1, um, the, the highest credit score... Uh, the proportion of no mortgage denied, meaning approved, is greater than the other categories. So that uh, tends to indicate higher credit scores associated with higher mortgage approval. Okay, now we can fill that uh, or offer more detail there using some ggplot syntax where we examine perhaps uh, the case of if there's a public record against an individual. So if we go back here, we see here uh, PBCR is public bad credit record, meaning some kind of legal or court case that's found that you didn't pay a debt payment in time or you didn't stick to a schedule that's been recorded in law. Okay, and again, not that important if you're already if your credit score is one but seems to be more relevant if your credit score is six so if your credit score is quite low and you have this finding against you that tends to militate against mortgage approval okay so there's some kind of non-linearity going on here the pbcr not that important if your credit score is high but becomes increasingly important as your credit score uh, gets low Okay, so let's want run one more graph here. And uh, this time we'll look at self-employed. And the vast majority of people are not self-employed. and But there are some limited. And we're going to investigate this that have any bearing. Okay, so in the next video I'm going to examine this using the tidyverse. What extent self-employment has a bearing on mortgage approval?